Across the former Soviet Union, believers are reaching their country for Christ, no matter the cost. I am called to be a witness for Christ, but that has been a dangerous calling. Plus, a pro ball player with a major league problem. It started getting worse and worse for about eight months. Find out what got him back in the game. That's when I just knew that God, that, like that was a true word from the Lord, and it was for me. On today's 700 Club. Well, welcome to this edition of the 700 Club. We've got some great things for you. But I tell you, overseas, maybe the Asians are used to uh, inflamed rhetoric, and certainly dictators just like to blow off steam in front of their people to get them all steamed up. But the guy that's in charge of uh, North Korea is saying some things that have got us all steamed up. They say, well, it's just a war of words between the U.S. and North Korea. But the North is threatening to turn it into the ultimate battle a thermonuclear war with atom bombs falling on the west coast of the United States of America. That's serious business. Terry? Well, North Korea says it's prepared to fight if the United States takes military action to stop its ballistic missile program. Still, President Trump isn't backing down from his move to finally end Kim Jong-un's threats. Ephraim Graham has the story. In the aftermath of Vice President Pence's visit to the Korean demilitarized zone, North Korea's deputy representative at the UN gave a stern warning to the world body. The summer nuclear war may break out at any moment on the peninsula. How great is the North Korea threat? Despite this weekend's missile failure last month, the country launched four ballistic missiles more than 600 miles. They dropped into the Sea of Japan three of them in Japanese territorial waters. That was followed by more threats to launch missiles and maybe even a nuclear one against the United States. North Korea is not backing down. We'll be conducting more missile tests on a weekly, monthly and yearly basis. Any message from North Korea? You gotta behave. In Japan, Vice President Mike Pence said the U.S. will be reaching out to North Korea's neighbors to help shut down Kim Jong-un's missile and nuclear development programs. The era of strategic patience is over. And while all options are on the table, uh, President Trump is determined to work closely with Japan, with South Korea, with all our allies in the region. And with China. China wants to cool tempers and would like to see a return to multilateral negotiations with North Korea. But Pyongyang has a long record of bad behavior, and it broke a previous agreement negotiated by President Bill Clinton. In 1994, the Korean government agreed to shut down its nuclear development program. Five years later, CBN News obtained satellite imagery showing a plutonium production site still in operation near Yongbyon. North Korea is a problem. The problem will be taken care of. For now, the president isn't saying how he intends to deal with the North Korea problem. However, the United States is in the first phase of deploying the Thermal High Altitude Area Defense Anti-Ballistic Missile System, THAAD, in South Korea. And when asked what he plans next, President Trump said, wait and see. Ephraim Gray, CBN News. Well, you're watching the 700 Club. Our international correspondent, Gary Lane, is with us. Gary, you were actually in North Korea. You've seen some of these things. Tell us what your reaction is. Well, I, I think we have to uh, take him at his word, what, what Un is saying. Mm -hmm. uh, does he have the capability to launch a nuclear missile against the U.S.? Maybe not at this time, but if he continues down the road, yes, he will mm -hmm. eventually do that. Well, you know, the thing is, so I, I was stationed north of the 38th parallel when I was in Korea, and uh, I'm familiar with the mountainous region. Sure. But Seoul, it amazed me. Seoul, when I first saw it, was kind of like this sleepy little Korean village where they had the papa sons and they had the honey buckets for the, they didn't have any sewers. I mean, it was unbelievable. Come back, it's one of the most modern, incredible cities with millions of people living there. 
and the North has, has targeted them, well, what kind of armament does the North have that they could aim at Seoul, for example? Well, as you know, they've, they've got these uh, missiles that they've been launching with a range of 600 miles. Uh -huh. uh, I don't know that they can put a nuclear device on that, but they could put some power behind it. Uh, they have a thrust of about uh, 80 tons, so that's that's a pretty powerful missile. Those could strike there, but they, all, they also have uh, armaments along the border, and as much as a million men uh, that they could deploy and uh, just cross over the border. It would take them probably uh, less than two hours to get to Seoul. And we just have a little tripwire. We, we've got some thousands of people, but we, I mean, it's, tri it's a tripwire. 29,000. How many? We have about 29,000 29, troops there. Well, that wouldn't yes. stand up against a million men. No, no and, they, and the South Koreans have about a half a million. Uh-huh. Uh, so. Well, they're going about their business. What, what, what are they doing? I mean, it's an extraordinarily prosperous country. Uh, South Korea? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, it is. I mean, uh, many of their cars are driven here in the U.S., right? Oh, Hyundai yeah. and Kia and so forth. But they're tremendously prosperous. But what North Korea is doing now, they're trying to put on a show. The Pyongyang is this up-and-coming city mm. now with new buildings and modern shopping centers and so forth. But it's all for show because if you go into the countryside, the, uh, many of the people are starving. Have you had a chance to actually go up there and visit? I, I haven't been to Pyongyang. I walked across the border of the DMZ, yeah. and uh, I, I had a uh, North Korean guard. Uh, if looks could kill, I'd probably be dead. Yeah. But I soon crossed back into South Korea. Uh, but, uh, you know, our vice president was there, and he stared them down at the DMZ as well. Well, they talk about that uh, bunk, uh, bus. What is it? Mother <laughs> of all bombs. Mother of, yeah. Moab. I'm trying Moab. to get a bunker buster. Um, it's a powerful weapon. Well, we could use that against Pyongyang. I mean, if, if, they, if they could identify where the nuclear facilities are. It's about 11 tons of TNT. That's uh -huh. a very powerful bomb. We used it in Afghanistan. Uh, I think the concern has been, Pat, as you know, because you've been there, you spent mm. time there, it's a densely populated area. You can't yeah. use tactical nukes because if you do, the fallout would go into China, into Japan, South Korea, Russia, and so mm. forth. So what you have to do is minimize civilian casualties, any nuclear fallout. The mother of all bombs would do that. You could hit some missile launch sites, also mm. some nuclear development sites. Well, it's a, uh, what, what are people, you've talked to people, what do they say, you know, I, I've I've personally been wrestling with the, with the solutions, and I'm not sure we've got any good solutions. Look, the president has said he's tired of this. We, mm -hmm. We've gone for 25 years, and what has happened time and time again, it happened under Bill Clinton, then again under Bush, under Obama. They make agreements, and then they violate those. They only go a couple of years, and then they start building their nuclear facilities and their missiles again. There is uh, some indication that they have a missile program right now with Iran in cooperation with Iran. The Pentagon last January were mm -hmm. very uh, expressed concern uh, about a missile that uh, was North Korean in design that the Iranians uh, fired off, about 630 mile range on it. Mm -hmm. uh, so that we know that they're working with the Iranians on missiles. Uh, are they working on them with them on a secret nuclear weapons program, perhaps? There's been some talk of Sable Team 6 being uh, ready to do an assassination job on yeah. oh, now, Do you think this, that's at all possible? It's, it's very hard to penetrate that country. I don't it? know that Un, yes, it's hard to penetrate the country, and I don't know that Un, uh, you could get to Un. Mm -hmm. uh, he's surrounded by a lot of military people. So, and regime, he stays hidden. What they're, they're talking about a regime change where China would uh, midwife a regime change. Is, is, have you had any talks about that? I, I haven't heard about that, but I know at this point China is tr trying to cooperate with the U.S. and help us out by doing things like sending coal back mm -hmm. to North Korea and also stopping the flow of oil back and forth. So economic measures, military, they, they put 150,000 men on the border of North Korea and China. Uh, whether they'll use them or not, I don't know. They would like to see tempers cooled oh, sure. and, and some kind of negotiation restarted, but have those ever worked? For well, 25 years, they have not stopped North Korea from doing what the, it wants to do. The big mistake was when Truman kept uh, MacArthur from MacArthur. going to the Yalu and sealing off that peninsula. We could have we could have sealed it off, put in a Democratic governor, and it would be fine. But no, we didn't do it. What so, did you think at that time? Because you were there. Well, uh, hey, I, I was just a lowly lieutenant, <laughs> and I, I didn't have much to do, but I we were all glad to get it over with. I mean, they were going back and forth in those uh, negotiations, you know, at uh, where Pan Moon John, where 
And uh, they weren't going anywhere, but we were just glad to see the fighting over. I mean, it, it, it was a nasty place, and we were, it was cold, and those mountains were terrible, and people were getting killed. I had a, a father-in-law who uh, served over there, yeah. and one-third of his, uh, his unit uh, never came back, and well, they had some brutal fighting. It was terrible, and the, the thing is, they started trading. I'd get a hill here, this is our hill, no, 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 that's your hill, let's go fight, and they'd go fight over the hill, then they'd go by another one. And these Marines and others would die to take this piece of real estate, which would then be given back at the negotiating table. It was just nonsense. And, you know, most Americans do not realize that we never had a peace treaty with them. Never, there was never. an armistice to start or a ceasefire agreement, there was but never a peace treaty. We're still technically at war. Endless negotiation. Well, Gary, thank you for being with us. And ladies and gentlemen, if there's ever something to pray about, this is it. Well, in other news, the manhunt has been underway across several states for the murderer who killed a man and posted the murder on Facebook. The victim's family has a message. Wendy has that story. Thank Thanks, you. Matt. The children of the 74-year-old victim say they forgive their father's killer because the Bible tells them to. I just want him to know that God loves him. We love him. Yes, we're hurt, but we have to forgive him. Because if we don't forgive him, the Bible says your heavenly father won't forgive you. Steve, I forgive you, man. I said, I'm not happy what you did, but I forgive you. Mm, incredible. Godwin was the father of six girls and four boys. They say he took them to church every Sunday. The killer, as you see there, Steve Stevens, is still on the run. Well, Supreme Court Justice Neil Gorsuch hit the ground running on his first day on the high court bench. He asked more questions than any of the other justices. That's unusual for a rookie member. Now that Gorsuch has been confirmed, the court is back to nine members after Justice Antonin Scalia died 14 months ago. The court will take up a closely watched case involving taxpayer money and religion on Wednesday. CBN News will have a report on that case tomorrow. Well, don't look for tax reform to get finished any anytime soon. That's the word from Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin. He told the Financial Times that getting tax reform passed by Congress and on President Trump's desk by August was not realistic at this point. The economy has been the top issue for millions of voters. And Pat, as you know, tax cuts for businesses and individuals is a key part of President Trump's plan for getting the economy growing again. Well, I wouldn't argue with Steve Mnuchin. He's a pretty sharp guy, but it does seem to me they could uh, lower the corporate tax rate very easily. Just one stroke of the pen, you see, oh, it would take it down from, say, it's 35 percent down to 20 percent. Okay, done. There's a tremendous, uh, well, bipartisan support for that. They could uh, lower the individual tax rate, same thing. But in terms of an overall uh, uh, overhaul, I should say, of the entire tax code. That is a monumental task. And I tell you, every lobbyist from every corner of the world is going to be pushing the senators and the congressmen to, uh, to, to, to uh, give their concessions and leave them in the tax code. They call it the uh, accountants and lawyers tax relief bill, and they don't want to give up what they've got. So it's going to be a fight. But in terms of just the corporate rate, they can lower that in a heartbeat, and they really should get it over with, and they can come back and do the big one later. Terry? Well, up next, five former Soviet republics where the only safe place to talk about Jesus is the workplace. See how young Christian professionals in Central Asia are sharing the gospel. Welcome back. You're watching the 700 Club. Man, it's full of news. There's so much going on in the world. The growth of radical Islam has helped make 2016 one of the worst years ever for Christian persecution. Christians in a predominantly Muslim region in Central Asia continue to face almost daily harassment for just sharing their faith. Even so, many young professionals in the five so-called stand countries are boldly spreading the gospel. Our George Thomas was there with this story from a place called Kyrgyzstan. A 
a Christian living in any of the five former Soviet republics of Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan or Turkmenistan can expect intimidation, harassment or worse, jail time for telling others about their faith. Artur, not his real name, is from Uzbekistan. I am called to be a witness for Christ, but that has been a dangerous calling. Maxim lives in northern Tajikistan. When the authorities discover someone has converted to Christianity, they will gather relatives, friends and family of the accused and bring him or her before an Islamic council of elders. The convert then stands before the group and has to decide between faith or family. 25 years after the Soviet Union disappeared and these republics gained their independence, the five so-called stand states have become repressive and hostile towards people of faith. In recent years, Christians have come under intense pressure here in Central Asia. In fact, in an attempt to crack down on radical Islam, these five governments have enacted laws curbing their activities. But here's the problem. Instead of going after Muslims, these governments are using these laws to go after Christians. Dr. Michael Cherenkov follows religious freedom issues in the former Soviet Union. These laws have forced Christians to be more creative and invent new approaches to sharing the gospel. Cherenkov says while churches and Christian organizations raise suspicion, individual relationships go virtually unnoticed. We are discovering that being a witness for Christ in the workplace is probably the only safe and effective form of evangelization. On a recent Saturday morning, hundreds of young Christians from across the region met for the first ever Next Generation Professional Leaders Initiative. The event was the brainchild and dream of Sergei Rakuba. It is not possible to overstate the significance of the gathering. He grew up in the former Soviet Union and remembers what it was like as a young Christian trying to discover his purpose in life. I was not allowed to study in the universities because I was a Christian. And throughout the whole territory of the Soviet Union, you could not find even one Christian professor, Christian doctor or Christian lawyer. Even the word business was a foreign word for Christians at that time. Rakuba brought together entrepreneurs, doctors, educators, lawyers and media experts to teach young professionals how to be effective witnesses for Christ in the marketplace. This is a generation that didn't grow up in a secular and repressive Soviet mindset. So they have a unique perspective, unique gifts and talents that can bring transformation to their communities. 31-year-old Urmat works as an IT specialist from Kyrgyzstan. While it's not always easy to talk openly about faith, I'm learning that my deeds should speak louder than my words and that building long-term relationships is vital. 17-year-old Miriam teaches English in Kazakhstan. My parents and all my relatives are against me because I'm a Christian. She says meeting others who have also endured much for their faith and still want to be used by God was a huge encouragement. This gathering is also important because it's teaching us how to safely combine our profession with our passion for Christ. Yevgeny is a media specialist. To see a lot of young people who are really interested in being useful for God is inspiring to me. This has also been a wonderful opportunity to network with others. Rakuba says it's up to these young professionals to instill biblical values into their societies. Only then will they see lasting change. Even though Islam is the dominant religion and the radical Islam is becoming more influential here, I am so blessed to witness the courage and confidence demonstrated by young Christians in Central Asia. George Thomas, CBN News, Bishkek, Kyrgyzstan. It's amazing. You know, we were talking about prophecy and uh, the 38th chapter of Ezekiel tells about a coalition in the latter days will come against Israel. And part of that coalition involves those Caucasian nations, those stands. And that will be part of the coalition. In the news, by the way, the president of Turkey just won what looked like a fixed or rigged election, but he won it and so, to gain uh, exceptional powers. He is much more a autocratic dictator than he was before. 
and with few checks uh, on his power. So Erdogan will claim that uh, he is now the sole autocrat uh, of Turkey. So he will move Turkey much more extreme toward radical Islam. So Turkey joins in with these uh, Islamic republics in, in Russia. And you have a f vicious coalition, which again joins with Iran. And um, it says Sudan. I guess that would be the uh, northern part of the Sudan. Um, and all these would come against Israel in the latter days. So that's something you'd look for. But it's, it's all shaping up, ladies and gentlemen. The, the, the drama is getting ready to get played out. And we'll keep you informed because you have to read the newspaper on the one hand, read the Bible on the other. Yeah. It is amazing to yeah. watch it all fall it's, into place. It's happening yeah. right, right according to mm. plan. Well, coming up, a pro baseball player gets a career-threatening injury. Players are dime a dozen, and if they hear that you're injured, it could cost your job really quick. Watch how this slugger was supernaturally healed after this. There were so many issues in my bag. Pretty much had shut me down. I couldn't even stand up straight. After going to Laser Spine Institute, I can't tell you how much happier I am. After years of living with chronic back pain, I finally found the answer. Call Laser Spine Institute, the leader in minimally invasive spine surgery, to learn how you can get lasting relief from chronic neck and back pain, all with a less than one inch incision. If you or a loved one have been diagnosed with spinal stenosis, bulging or herniated disc, sciatica, or other chronic spine conditions, call today for your no-cost MRI review. After surgery, I was so surprised that I could walk the next day and walk without pain. It was amazing. If you've been told you might need neck or back surgery, call 1-844-520-BACK now for your no-cost MRI review. Calling Laser Spine Institute was the best decision I've ever made. I can lift up my three-year-old, run and play, and they help me get my life back. Laser Spine Institute, a less than one-inch incision, a lifetime of standing tall. At K-12, we believe that every child is uniquely brilliant. Our full-time, tuition-free online public schools allow students to school in a way that brings out their strengths. What I like about being able to educate my son at home is that he gets to be strong in who he is, not conform to be somebody else. He was testing out at second grade level, and now he's at fifth grade level in a few short months. The quality of education that we have at K-12, it's top-notch. It's rigorous, it's engaging, the kids like what they're doing, and they want to learn more. Every kid has a talent, has a gift. To nurture that gift, to be able to tailor a learning plan for a student allows them to flourish. I get online learning, offline learning, and hands-on learning. My teacher is amazing. I love her. Join the growing community of K-12 families who have succeeded with an individually tailored, tuition-free online public school education. Call now or visit k12.com to learn more. Tuition free for grades K through 12 in most states. Hi, I'm Terry Mewson. At CBN, we're here to pray for you all year long. But each spring, the entire staff of CBN sets aside a special week of prayer to intercede for your needs. Spring is the time of new beginnings, so please send us your requests, no matter how big or small, so we can pray for you. Call us now or mail your prayer request today. It's our privilege to pray for you. Each spring, our staff designates a special week of prayer where we pray for you, our partners and viewers. So from Monday, April 24th through Friday, April 28th, CBN staff is going to be gathering daily at noon to pray for your needs. Now, if you've received this mailing with a brochure called Planting the Seeds of Faith, we'd love for you to take a moment and send us your prayer request. There's a place for you to do that. You can also request prayer if you'd like by calling the number that you see on your screen. It's toll free, one 800 700 7000 or you can write if you'd like to to CBN's Week of Prayer CBN Center Virginia Beach Virginia and our zip code is 23463 but we it's our honor to pray for you and we would love to hear from you so if you're a 700 club member watch for this mailing if you're not and you need prayer would like us to be praying for you during this week of prayer you can call or go online and we welcome your prayer requests well, Derek Piles has been a professional baseball player for eight years. He's living his dream, but he also knows the players are a dime a dozen and 
If you're injured, you can be replaced very quickly. And that's why when Derek hurt his hip, he kept it to himself and he prayed through the pain. Until it hurt so much, he became desperate for an answer to his prayers. Take a look. At 27 years old, Derek Piles was living his childhood dream. Well, I started playing when I was about six years old, and um, I just always knew when I, I was a little boy I wanted to be a professional baseball player. It's something I feel like I was born to actually do. Definitely a God-given calling. Derek was in his seventh season with the AAA club when his right hip started hurting. I think the constant wear, wear and tear, you know, just, just started getting worse and worse for about, about eight months. As an outfielder and designated hitter, Derek relied on his speed and the pain was slowing him down. Still, he continued to play and never told anyone about the injury. Players are dime a dozen and if they hear that, that you're injured, it could cost you a job really quick. But I know that it was a constant nagging inside the back of my mind, knowing that this was bad, you know, knowing that I really hadn't told the coaches, knowing that, um, you know, I, I wasn't at my very best. It was, it was just really frustrating. One night while on the road, Derek went to his hotel room after toughing out another game. But this time, he knew he couldn't play through the pain much longer and feared this could be the end of his season and possibly his career. At that point in time, I was desperate, and I was just like, Lord, if you don't do something, I'm, I'm going to be going home for, for the summer, and it was time for him to either do something or I was going to be in really, really big trouble. You know, I, I, I flipped on, on the TV, and I've seen the 700 Club before, and it's just there, and, and it just seemed like the perfect timing, you know? As he watched, Gordon and Terry started praying. Someone else with problems in your right hip, and there's grinding in the joint, God's just going to just give you back that hip joint, no pain, no discomfort uh, in anything that you do. And I just really, really felt his power begin to move on that, on that part of my body. Just receive it now in Jesus' name. That's when, you know, I, I, I just knew that God, that, like, like that was a true word from, from the Lord, and it was for me. And my pain level with the, the following day was pretty much nothing. Within about a day and a half, I noticed that it was completely better. I didn't feel like the popping out, out of the place or, you know, it, or grinding or anything like that. Derek played his next game and the rest of the season pain-free. The fact that I was able to finish the season was, was a big deal. And it wasn't just about me. I really want to go out every year and really do well and, and, and see, see better for, for my family each year too. Building on that successful season, Derek's career has continued to progress. He uses every opportunity to witness to teammates and fans about God's power to heal. We can pray big and pray small, you know, and, and really believe God for small things and pray for big things and pray for miracles. And, and as long as our heart's right to, to, to really honor the Lord with it and really give Him all, all the glory, then, then God will do great things with our lives. You know, it's such a celebration when an athlete makes a professional team, but boy, one injury can make a total difference in mm. your life. What a powerful story of it healing. It was. I mean, dramatic, wonderful yeah, healing. Really amazing. So, Terry, here's one that from Cynthia who lives in Chesterfield, Michigan. She had an esophageal burning when she ate after she was washing on April the 4th last year. Uh, I guess it was last year. It was this year. I'm, I'm, I, maybe it was this year. She heard Terry give a word. Someone you have an esophagus problem causes pain for you. There's a burning. It comes with it and so forth. God is healing you. Cynthia felt a warmth. She was completely healed. Now she can drink coffee and chocolate or anything else and no burning. Isn't wow. that great? That's awesome. Yeah. Well, this yeah. is Patricia. She lives in Mansfield, Ohio. She suffered from bone spurs in her neck for years. She was watching this program on the 29th of March, and Pat, she heard you give this word of knowledge. Somebody has a neck pain. Talking about bone spurs, there's arthritis in your neck, and it's really been sore, and you have a hard time even moving. Put your hand on your neck in the name of Jesus. Patricia claimed the word. Immediately the pain was gone, and she hasn't had any more pain since that day. You know, we have these miracles take place every day, every day, every day, and there are thousands and up, up over a million right now, as far as I can tell. Uh, but it's God, and God wants to touch you and heal you. 
Jesus never turned down anybody for healing. You read the Gospels, and you will never find one person who Jesus said, no, I will not heal you. Not one. Now, he made them wait for a time. He tested their faith, and he pushed them in the, you know, the Syrophoenician woman had, a, had quite a time getting through, but he, she, she got the answer. But in your life, Jesus has one word for the leper. He said, I will be clean. I will. And he says to you, I will. Now, what do you want? Terry and I are going to join hands. We're going to believe God right mm -hmm. now. Father, thank you for this wonderful, Jesus. these examples of miracles. And Lord, at this moment, in this audience, there are people who are suffering. Somebody's had, uh, it looks like a hip implant, and it, the operation hasn't gone very well, and you're, you're having a lot of pain. And right now, that whole thing is settling into the socket, and it's, the inflammation is leaving, and you are healed in the name of Jesus. Terry. Someone else, you've had trouble with your hearing. You don't have hearing aids, but it's like suddenly your hearing is diminished and uh, you're so concerned about it. God's opening your ears right now in Jesus' name. Your hearing will be more acute than it's been in a long time. Someone else, you also have esophageal problems. God's healing that for you right now. Just put your hand on your throat and lift up your other hand and receive it. You are made whole in Jesus' name. There's a doctor watching this program right now and you, your practice is going all to pieces because you're starting to shake. And as a nervous condition, it's just you've had so many problems come upon you and you are overwhelmed and you're just shaking. And God right now is filling you with peace. You're going to have victory over all these problems and you're going to be completely whole in the name of mm -hmm. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Now, if you want further prayer, all you got to do is pick up the phone, call in. And Terry, did you have something else if you did? You know, I felt like there's somebody that has a, um, a problem with a loss of tissue mass. I don't even know why you would have that if it's been an accident or something. But God is going to restore that for you and literally rebuild the part of your body where that tissue's Amen. diminished. Amen. Telephone number is easy. It's, it's 800, toll free, 700, 7,000. Counselors right now are on the phone. They love to pray for you. If you love to hear what God has done for you. And we've got a leader in the Southern Baptist Church who's written an amazing book, mm. Terry. Well, still ahead, shocking statistics on adultery and pornography among Christian men. The pastor of one of the largest churches in America talks about breaking addictive behaviors. Johnny Hunt joins us live later on today's 700 Club. Welcome back to the 700 Club. A big election battle in a congressional race in Georgia. Democrats have poured more than $8 million into the contest. They're trying to get a win against President Trump. It's the seat vacated by Tom Price, who's now Secretary of Health and Human Services. Polls show Democrat John Ossoff in the lead. Republican Karen Handel is second in most polls. It's all about get out the vote. You know, polls are just polls. Uh, it's all about making sure that folks are aware there's an election tomorrow, that's an important one. Very energized, feel very enthusiastic and cautiously optimistic for tomorrow. Nothing um, is over until it's over and the polls close. If no candidate gets over 50%, the race goes to a runoff. That would favor the Republicans in that conservative district. Florida remains under a state of emergency because of wildfires. Florida's governor says the state hasn't seen fires this intense since 2011. The Florida Forestry Service says there were 110 active fires covering more than 20,000 acres. The two fires needing the most attention are located in the central Florida region. And you can always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website at CBNNews.com. Pat and Terry will be back with more of the 700 Club right after this. Well, we've got a shocking revelation for you right now. Picture a man who's a Bible-believing Christian, regularly attends church, but he also regularly gets drunk, has a couple of affairs. Do you think this man is an exception? Well, according to mega church pastor Johnny Hunt, 
This man is the rule, not the exception. Johnny Hunt has made it a mission to help people break strongholds, which he defines as any habit that has got a hold of you. Johnny is the pastor of one of the largest churches in the U.S., First Baptist Church in Woodstock, Georgia. He says to break the chains of addiction and bad habits, we can't do it on our own. In his book, Demolishing Strongholds, he shares the secrets to breaking free from destructive behavior. Well, please welcome to the 700 Club, a leader in the Southern Baptist Church, Pastor Johnny Hunt. Johnny, it's good to have you Thank with you. us. Thank you. It's God a joy to be with you. Thank you. Hey, listen, you know, you've pastored a lot of guys. Aren't these men a little ashamed to talk about all these sexual affairs? Will they, will they open up to you and tell you what they do? Well, the very problem with pornography is that it's secret, keeps you in isolation. Right. And that's exactly where the enemy takes those who ultimately take their life. So if we can get them to come out in the open, uh -huh. so sharing a moment ago, Proverbs teaches that any sin we cover, he uncovers, and sure. any we uncover, he covers. But we've got to not only be willing to uncover them or we won't prosper. So we, we're really finding yeah. some real victory well, getting you, men there. These guys are professing Christians. I guess they claim to be born again Christian. What do they do? Well, when you realize that a person can deal with something uh -huh. that becomes a habit, and yeah. they can feel, I can break it any time. We hear it all the time. But then there's times that that habit really gets a hold of them. And then right. we think the scripture refers to it as a stronghold. And now as much as they want to be free, uh, they haven't been able to break free. And they normally won't unless they go through certain steps and commitment mm -hmm. that can lead to real victory. Well, again, you as a pastor, I've been a pastor for a while along the way, but you, you deal with people and, and they begin to open up to you. How long does it take to get them to open up what really is going on in their lives? And well, seemingly the majority never have and may never will. Oh, okay. But when we tell stories, even like in the first part of my book, I tell the story of a leading Christian minister that actually ended up taking his life. In other words, if you don't demolish a stronghold, mm -hmm. the stronghold will demolish you. I think when they hear stories like that, it begins to really open them up. And mm -hmm. you know, the wonderful old statement, yeah. until the pain of staying the same <laughs> becomes greater than the pain of change, right. they're not willing to change. So uh, it's, it's a constant challenge. Well, John, this deal is tearing up marriages, it's tearing up homes, it's tearing up careers. Aren't they aware of what, what it does, this pornography and having affairs and all this stuff? You know, Dietrich Bonhoeffer said many years ago that the enemy will lead you to a point where there's just momentary forgetfulness yeah. of God. So just in that moment, uh -huh. and it seems to happen over and over again. So you're exactly right. It, it has ruined many homes. It's ruined witness, influence, testimony. Mm -hmm. and uh, But, you know, the enemy has a way of covering up the consequences. He doesn't want you to think about the future. It's just that moment of pleasure. Give us some for instances, because this book has them. Could you, could you point to the one that is uppermost right now in your mind you can tell us about? Well, I could tell you that there's people in jail right now, yeah. ministers, uh, that got into pornography and then led to child pornography, and then they were arrested, and they're facing long sentences. Wait a minute. Ministers? ministers. As in ministers? Of the, as, as in ministers of the have gospel. Have you known them personally? I uh, know them personally. Yes, you sir. do? Yes, And sir. they got into child porn, and then they wound yeah. up getting arrested yeah. for that? We, we have a ministry called City of Refuge. James Dobson years ago said yeah. it's the most complete ministry within a local church he's ever seen. So I have like eight pastors and families right now right. that Woodstock is literally taking care of. We furnish housing for them, furnish jobs for them, mm -hmm. help them pay their bills so they can keep their testimony above water. And we have a full counseling ministry to help bring them back to health in their marriage and in their home yeah. and with their children and with their relationship with God. So as a result of having this type of ministry, when you can get a person in a safe place, Mm -hmm. they, it's like peeling the onion. They're willing to tell you just what's been going on in their life. So it's in that context that a lot's discovered. Your church is in the northern part of Atlanta. You have, what, 10,000 members? We've got about right at 20,000. 20, 000. I cut you in half. I'm sorry. Yeah, but that's how, many we're that's how many we're chasing. We don't catch that many every week. <laughs> All right. Well, there it is. It's one of the biggest churches in America. All right. But uh, 
these people are professionals. You're dealing with folks. This is higher income folks. They're, they're real estate people. They're, you know, right. salesmen, doctors, lawyers. And this porn is, is taking hold of them. It isn't with the lower classes, so to speak. They say 35% of the time that a person clicks on the web yeah. is to go to a pornographic site. 35%. There's nothing even a close second to porn on the World Wide Web to pornography. And then there's pop-ups for the kids. So I, I constantly deal with young men yeah. that got addicted, say, at 11 and have been uh, enslaved, say, for the last 10 years of their life. What are they, a pop-up, some naked woman or something? Yes, exactly. And so it's there. Agent Rogers used to say yeah. <clears throat> that if it comes up, mm -hmm. it takes all of the Spirit of God in you to move away from that site sure. instead of following it. And so um, yeah. the enemy is so subtle. Remember how Paul used to say that he feared mm -hmm. lest the enemy through his subtleness yeah. would deceive you as he did Adam and Eve. And he is really having a heyday in the area of pornography. Um, well, it's shocking pornography. because, you know, they won't admit it. I remember, you know, one of the associates of Dobson who was talking about about 35 percent of of the ministers were uh, having problems with porn. Is that, is that the number you know? That's is it. And then... Dobson, even 25 years ago, yeah. was saying that he feared that 50% of the men in the evangelical church were already struggling with pornography. Well, now, is this the general population, or is this something particularly uh, the attack against Christians? Yeah. I think it's the general population, and it certainly includes the Christian church. All right, all right. you've got these guys. Somebody comes to you, and he's got that problem. What do you do to them? You put them in a, in a program of rehab, or do you just... We have a ministry called Breaking Free. Break, okay. And probably averages 200 men every Monday night. Wow. And so there's real accountability. I think we've missed it in James 5, 16, mm -hmm. where the Scripture actually tells us to confess your faults yeah, one, to, one another. to another, yeah. and then pray for one for another. So what we've done, we've confessed it to God, and we feel like we've got God's forgiveness, but it's a cycle. We're not going to break the cycle. Okay. But I think when we bring another mature believer in that will hold us accountable, and that's a big word, accountability, yeah. to really desire to be free. And then we're seeing real victory where men are sharing with their wives. Mm. But again, <clears throat> the enemy would have them to believe that if they share, they're going to be dealing with the consequences again of what, how's their wife going to react. So they continue to live in isolation. Well, what do these wives do? I mean, she suddenly, her, her husband says, look, honey, I'm, I've been hooked up on porn. If he says I've had an affair, oh, you've hurt me, and I'm walking out and taking the kids. I mean, what, what do you do to keep the wives from freaking out? Yeah, a lot of times it's just to, to kind of help them understand that it's re really an addiction in the person's life. Mm -hmm. it, someone may say this, there's no way you could do that and love your wife at the same time. I would challenge that statement. Mm -hmm. I believe they really can. The enemy is out to destroy us. I, I call him a glory stealer in my book <laughs> yeah. because Ephesians 3.21 says that God wants to get glory through the church in yeah. Christ Jesus. But if he can get us not living for Jesus, we ought. He steals the glory that God would have gotten mm -hmm. for our lives. Well, these women have got to understand that their husbands have been captured. I mean, it's like an enemy force has captured them and taken them prisoner. Right, it is. And we, we work with the wives uh, as well. Now, a lot of times they've gotten into pornography and haven't made it to the affair. That's probably where it's going to end up mm -hmm. if they don't get help. So when they're willing to come um, and be true with their spouses, a lot of times it leads to greater intimacy with the husband and wife because the wife is now saying, my husband can share his deepest secrets with me. Uh -huh. And so as a result, it uh, real get, gives real hope for the marriage. You know, I, I see these people, I, I've seen them, I mean, these very, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, beautiful women, beautifully dressed, high fashion, high society, They've got to deal with this stuff. They're not just, again, just somebody off the street. These, right. are, these are professional people. Yeah. Well, living in Atlanta, and you probably know this, yeah. but the highest sex trafficking in the United States is in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, and yet we're 5 million people compared to, say, 19 million in L.A. County or 22 yeah. million in New York. So it's, uh, it's everywhere. It's at different levels, whether it's on a computer, walking the streets, mm -hmm. Uh, on a website that a person can travel to. This has become a hub of, of sex trafficking? Exactly. From people from South America and other countries? All over the world. 
into Atlanta. Into Atlanta. And, uh, and so you can read the stats on the average age of the girl that's involved, the average age of the man that's looking to be involved. The average salary of a pimp in Atlanta, Georgia, is $30,000 a week. A week? A week. Not, not a year, $30,000 a, <laughs> a week. So it's pretty, pretty lucrative. It's very. And, so, and we, we've, we're involved in sex trafficking and bringing these young ladies off the streets. But we have a problem. What was that? They want to go back. Their pimps have been so good to them. They, oh, they like on. that lifestyle. I so they beat them up. So it's difficult. Well, it's amazing what they're willing to take if they get what they feel they want or need at the same time. You're, you're serious. Very serious. Yeah. So you, you, you don't get many of these girls? No, the others. ones we brought into very nice homes. The major problem is not we cannot help them. They leave before we can get them really deeply involved That's, in the process. Are these American women or a foreign uh, women? Both, but a lot of American women. A Dear lot. Me, Johnny, I, I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to get shocked, this is it. Demolishing Stronghold. Everybody ought to get hold of this book. Uh, is it selling well, I hope? Uh, it was number one men's release in two days that it hit the market <laughs> and became number one release in four days. It's done very well. All right. Well, it's available. Um, I must say, as one who designs covers, this isn't the most attractive book cover I've ever seen. <laughs> but, but if this doesn't turn you off, I don't know what will. It's called Demolishing Strongholds, a national bestseller. You can get it on Amazon or wherever. Anywhere books are sold. Yeah. So good to see you. God bless you. Good to see Thank you. you. Thanks for all you do. All right. Johnny Hunt, my God. You wouldn't believe it. You don't believe it, and you women need to understand what's going on with your husband. I, I remember one woman I encountered from overseas someplace, and some witch had gotten hold of her husband, and I said, look, he's been captured. You've got to get him free. It's like the enemy has taken him prisoner. These guys are under demonic um, uh, attack, demolishing strongholds. Ooh! All right, Terry, uh, you want to tell Andy? I guess so. <laughs> get the book. <laughs> well, still ahead. We're going to bring it on. Grace says, my mom says that I need to ask God for forgiveness, but I don't feel that way. What do you think, Pat? Well, Pat's going to tell us exactly what he thinks after this. To listen to our top songs of the week, go to CBN radio at CBN.com. Well, we want to take some time to bring it on with some of the questions that you all have sent in. And Pat, this first one comes from, interestingly enough, Grace, who says, my mom says that I'm at the age where I know right from wrong and that I need to ask for forgiveness from God, but I don't feel that way. What do you think of this, Pat? You know, we used to have a big discussion in the Baptist church about when has somebody reached the age of accountability. Until they reached that age, the stuff they did was unknown. If there's no law, you don't understand the law, then therefore you're not accountable, you're not guilty. So <clears throat> at what point? Is it age six, age seven, age eight? So know. Grace, I don't know how old you are, but if you're that old, you're old enough. If you're in your teens, absolutely. And uh, But I, I don't think you need to, at age five or six, go into a, a big uh, penance and uh, uh, be a couple of time. I, I, I don't think that is appropriate. But if the stuff that you're doing that you know is wrong, ask God to forgive you. And if you don't, but you say you don't feel like it, well, maybe you, you don't have any sense that you've done something wrong. That's what the occasion of accountability is. If, if there is no law, there's no offense. That's what the Bible says. Okay. Okay, this is Amy who says, 15 years ago, I attended a church for a while and I was baptized. But after so long, I stopped attending church and I denied God. Is it possible to come to Christ again after I repent? Well, of course it is. You know, God is always willing to receive us. I, we get these questions over and over again because there's so many people that know the Lord and they fall away. But I don't know in your case whether you really were saved, whether you really came to the Lord or not. I don't know you. I don't know enough about you. But I do know this. Whatever is going on in your heart, God will welcome you home. It's like a child has wandered away from his parents and has left the house. Look at that prodigal son. He wasted his uh, substance on riotous living. But he came home and the father gave a feast and welcomed him. That's the, the, the description of God Almighty. He opens his arm and actually runs to you to love you. 
Okay, this is Eric Pat who says, how can I get respected? My brother and sister-in-law moved into my mother's house again for the third time in the last five years. They don't do chores, they leave messes and use me as a slave. I'm tired of bailing my brother out of jail. He and his wife are using my mother and me. I lock myself in my room and know it's not healthy. I want help. Oh, man, I need to know more about yeah. you. How old are you? Are you a teenager? Are you an adult? <clears throat> what is your status? Your, your brother and sister-in-law have moved into your mother's house and they've taken over. <clears throat> I tell you, the mother, if she wants to, can get a court order, a restraining order, and throw those people out, and they need to. They're freeloaders and they're evil. Uh, and they need to be made accountable. I, I don't know what else to say, but uh, I don't know whether you have the opportunity to do that. You need to talk to your mother, but you and your mother need to be in agreement that what these people are doing is wrong. All right. Okay, this is Julianne who says, the book of Revelation mentions that there will be, quote, a new heaven and a new earth. Who will live on the new earth or will people be given a choice to live in heaven or on the new earth? <laughs> I don't I think it will all be so wonderful, you want to enjoy all of it. Uh, the earth will be marvelous. You know, I, I don't see this. You know, I was reading today, and I remember uh, Speed Wilson, Colonel Wilson, uh, brought this out, and he was absolutely right. We think of the rapture as the good people being taken out of the earth and then the earth being left for all the bad people. But that's not what Jesus taught. He said, in the latter day, the angels will come and take out of my kingdom all those that offend and cast them into outer darkness. And then the righteous will sh shine forth as stars in the, in the kingdom of their Father. Mm -hmm. I think this war earth that's set up here is a pretty good place, and God may, will renew it. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, this is going to be the place where the righteous are going to be. And you say, well, where will you live? Well, I mean, you know, all, all we, we've got an awful lot to learn about the solar system, about the universe we live in. And I, I don't know it, and I don't, I'm asking for wisdom on it because it's so vast. But you say, where will you live? You'll live in the middle of God's kingdom, and if you're a part of the uh, chosen who accepted him, it'll be the most wonderful thing you can ever imagine. Well, we leave you with today's Power Minute from Matthew. He shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Okay, well, that's about all the time we've got. But thanks for being with us. Terry, it's a joy as always to be Thank with you. Thank you, Mr. Pat. It's great to God be with you today. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>